Honesty, passion, experience. It's Timberwolves Explosion, hosted on the sportstuff.com. And now, your host, Paladino Joey. Hello again, Timberwolves fans. Are you ready for the explosion of Timberwolves basketball? I am your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Timberwolves Explosion is available on thesportstuff.com, iTunes, Stitcher, and Double Twist. It's Friday morning once again. We're back here to talk Timberwolves, keeping things rolling. Bear with me. I'm a bit tired. Been kind of been staying late at work of late, so doing my best to uh, keep up with everything, get the information I need, and uh, bring you a bring you a quality show. So let's get started here. Friday night on last week, of course, January the twelfth. Minnesota hosted the New York Knicks. Of course, four games to review, four games to preview. <laughs> not the easiest schedule ever, not the hardest schedule ever, but yeah, next week is going to be uh, pretty tough, I think. Uh-huh. It's going to be, it's not going to be easy, but we'll get to that in the second segment. Let's get started. Minnesota wins 118-108. The Wolves doing a great job in the first two, not so great in the next two. So some bad habits kind of returning. Uh, unfortunately, one thing that returned immediately is we talked about the wonderful feeling of, well, keeping teams below 100 points. It was eight games in a row. Yeah, well, the Wolves didn't keep anybody under 100 points this week. So, yeah, but ultimately the Wolves wind up going 2-2 two and two in this case. So, yeah, 2-2. Two and two. Well, the New York Knicks game was a lot of fun, to be quite honest. And then, of course, we'll talk about Sunday, the Minnesota miracle that kind of motivated the Wolves, I guess. I, I, I don't know. I mean, why not? Didn't motivate the Wild enough, unfortunately. We'll talk about that tomorrow, Saturday morning. Brave the Wild podcast. Of course, Purple Mafia, if you want to keep up with the Minnesota Vikings. Boy, I love doing that show, and it's been uh, it's been a pleasure. It really has. Uh, let's keep going, though. Pardon me. The Unicorn is in town. Enos Cantor, Lance Thomas. Lance Thomas. Yep, Courtney Lee's still around, and he's still he's still okay. New York Knicks did a, uh, well, it was a pretty fun game to watch, quite honestly. And the Wolves did what they've been doing, scoring a ton of points and out, just outplaying teams, particularly in the second half in this game. Fairly close game in the first half. Not bad to watch. The Knicks were kind of hanging on to a very small lead, kind of a game of runs, a little back and forth. It was an entertaining basketball game on a Friday night. So, you know what? Good job. Um, Michael Beasley, again, very solid, 6 of 8 from the floor. So Michael Beasley returning to town, wearing number 8. And he got about 16 minutes and 13 points, 6 of 8 from the floor, like I said, and set up a couple people with some nice passes. Tim Hardaway Jr. returning from injury. He had 16 off the bench. Also, Kyle O'Quinn, 12 points off the bench. So something that sometimes, sometimes you wonder if it exists here in Minnesota, but the New York Knicks, solid bench there. So... Good job on that part. Enos Cantor, Carl Anthony Towns, a little mono we mono, but Carl, I thought, got the best here. Enos Cantor, though, in only about 27 minutes, extremely efficient throughout the night. 16 and 12, and he only missed 2 out of 10 shots. That's pretty good. The Knicks, in general, shot wonderfully throughout the night. Uh, about 54%, yeah, over 54%, just about everybody was, I mean, off the bench, my God, Kyle O'Quinn, 5 of 7, Tim Hardaway, 6 of 13, He's, he actually, believe it or not, was one of the few people under 50%, Lance Thomas, I mean, he played 29 minutes and did nothing out there, he was just part of the scenery, so, yeah, that's why you want guys like Beasley and Tim Hardaway kind of eating up some of those minutes, uh, Chris, Christoph Porzingis, he did not shoot well. He's the only reason why the Knicks field goal percentage was under like 65 throughout the night, and it did not help the Knicks' ho- uh, chances. Nice job by Todd Gibson and Jimmy Butler helping out on Christoph Porzingis. Uh, Porzingis, pardon me. I think I know his name. 6 of 19 from the floor, but he did can 3 of 5 from downtown. Entertaining overall game to watch. Uh, Taj Gibson was wonderful throughout the night. Carl Anthony Towns is the best player, though. Missed a triple-double by one. Uh, Jeff T getting back in form as a point guard, not as a shooter. Uh, only 3 of 11 from the floor. He was clanging in everything, including 1 of 6 from downtown. Carl, though, was making shots everywhere. Mid-range, he was attacking the basket. 9 of 15 overall. 2 of 4 from downtown, if I didn't already say that. Solid overall game. Wiggins, well, he's at least he's rebounding more. Uh, he shot poorly throughout the night for the most part. Attempted 20 shots in the game. Lots of mid-range shots time and time again. He was one of four from downtown. Uh, Gorgie and 
uh, Jamal Crawford with 10 points. Even Nemanja Bielitsa, I don't know if he's been listening to the show or something, but he at least was making his shots. 10 points. He made all four of his shots. Two of them were threes. Fun game. Again, fun, entertaining basketball game to watch. Certainly not the highlight of the week. I would have to say that would be the Portland game, but this, again, was a nice Friday. It was just nice Friday night basketball. Jimmy Butler, nondescript. He made half his shots, but only one up at 13 points. Kind of strange to see Jimmy not be a huge factor, but you know what? The Wolves just pulled away in that second half, and you felt comfortable most of the time, even though, you know, even though the Knicks, I thought, played very well. So, well done, New York. Well, here it is, the Minneapolis Miracle, January the 14th, and the hope is that that isn't it for the season, that there will be some more extremely positive play for the Minnesota Vikings, that it is a springboard, as last week's show was. This week was no springboard for the Timberwolves, as things would... uh, the spring broke or the spring needs to be replaced, that type of thing in the second half of these two, these four games. But a uh, nice little springboard performance for the Wolves. 120-103, crushing the Portland Trailblazers on the 14th. The Minneapolis Miracle occurred right as the game was starting. And it was like, oh man, what a, what a pleasure. What a pleasure. Fans were waiting for the game, all that, uh, for the Timberwolves game. Surprisingly, only 14,000 people there, but I suppose, yeah, a lot of those fans are probably at the Vikings game or busy staying home, that type of thing, watching the Viking game. Portland uh, Portland Trailblazers were, were kind of breathing down the Wolves' back not that long ago, but Minnesota's definitely pulled away as they wrap up a five-game homestand, 5-0. and oh, Pretty impressive. And the craziest number here is the fact that this is the first time the Wolves were 5-0 and oh in the homestand since 2001? And it's like, okay, yeah, our franchise has had some down years. Yeah, what we know. but And we hear talk about it every day, right? Every, everywhere, oh, this team has had this problem. They've been terrible since 2004. But again, 2004 was the best year in Timberwolves history. 03-04, 58 wins. 58 wins, and the Wolves did not have a 5-0 five, uh, five homestand during that season. So, interesting. Um, it is crazy. So, sometimes they get they got hot on occasion back in those days, but then they... Then when the playoffs would roll around, they'd melt like a snowflake. And I hated that. Ugh. Portland, of course, is one of those teams. Dallas, San Antonio was one of those three teams pretty much every bleeping year. And eventually it became the Lakers when it really started to matter. When the Wolves actually had home court advantage. That's the other statistic that drives you absolutely nuts. When you consider what the Lakers were, they were a 3 P team at the time. The Timberwolves in 0203, that was the best Wolves season in history. At that time, at that time, Garnett was second place for MVP that year. He was unbelievable. He probably should have won it that year, even more than the next year, because, man, he was just unbelievable that season, um, particularly defensively, along with his... He just had those breakout years, 0203 and 0304. That's when Garnett was at his absolute peak of his career. Um, and the Wolves get home court advantage for the first time in franchise history, and it's the Lakers. Rainy days in Kobe always get me down. And then the next, and then the next time around, home home court advantage again. The both both times the Wolves played the Lakers, they had home court advantage, and that was when Shaq and Kobe were still together. Just wrap your head around that one. Vince Germano knows that all all too well, and of course the Lakers won both of the series in six games. The Wolves would go up two games to one, and then boom, boom, boom. It was ah, uh, we'll see you next season, not tomorrow night. Next season. So sidetracked once again. One of the better backcourts in basketball. I won't call it the best backcourt in the NBA. We can call it second thir- or third best behind the Splash Brothers. <clears throat> yeah, we're happy for them. At least they're like one of the Splash Brothers. One of them. And Ain't Curry is the other one. <laughs> I like Clay Thompson. He's, yeah, you know, whatever. Uh, Damian Lillard. I, I don't like him anymore, man. I don't like his attitude. You know, when they showed uh, the Minneapolis Miracle, everybody's like, wow, wow. And then somebody kind of nudged. Damian Lillard, and he just had this, like, this whatever, like, why are you touching me look on his face. What a jerk. (laughs) What a jerk. I I don't know. So I'm not too impressed with Damian Lillard. I thought I liked him. Now I don't. I didn't like that. Like, really? You just saw one of the greatest plays ever, and you're just like, leave me alone? (laughs) Like a little prissy little prick. I don't know. But that's the vibe I got. That conversation's over. Pardon me. (laughs) CJ McCollum does what he does. Very limited game for C.J. McCollum due to foul trouble, so ha-ha to that. But again, McCollum, 3 of 4 from downtown. Big surprise. The Wolves passing him in the draft, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm sorry we did that. Uh, the Wolves are blowing the Blazers out for most of the night thanks to the Minneapolis Miracle, or 7 Heaven if you want to call it. Uh, Pat Connachton was pretty damn good off the bench for Portland, 18 points. But again, 
I don't know. Uh, how excited can you get for the Portland bench when they had to empty their bench pretty much most of the night as the Wolves were ahead by a pretty good margin. So take that, Damian Lillard. Of course, the first quarter was close. It was very back and forth, which is what you kind of expect between these two teams. And then the Wolves smother the uh, the uh, Portland Trailblazers and outscore them by 16 points, 26-10 to 10 in that second quarter. And that was the game, basically, as the Wolves would hang on to leads. Portland would kind of come back, a little bigger lead. The Portland would come back a little bit, but not enough to make it interesting. Wolves wind up winning by 17. It was literally a seesaw battle the rest of the game, but mostly in terms of, like, 10 points, 17, 10 points, 20. You know, that type of seesaw battle. Nothing more like lead changes as the Wolves would hang on after that first quarter and rock and roll most of the night. Fun, entertaining Sunday night game. Jeff Teague is returning into form. This more looked like Jeff Teague. Smoother shots. Of course, he only tempered one from downtown, but overall the floater, the overall game by Jeff Teague, attacking the basket, getting to the free throw line, all that. 22-8 and eight performance. Really enjoyable. Jimmy Butler, not quite as dramatic as last time, but still awesome game. 24 points. Carl Anthony Towns, 20-11. and 11. Josh Gibson, no double-double, but solid. Wiggins was good early, and then he stopped scoring, which was a bummer. He was really good early on. He was one of the leading scorers, and then he had like two points in the second half. So, I don't know. Whatever. He wanted about 17 points, and the Wolves routed the Blazers. So, I can't get too upset, I suppose, even though I'd love to see Wiggins just go off. I'm dying for that. Come on, Andrew, you can do it. There was a Shabazz Muhammad sighting. Good for him. Two points in four minutes. Marcus Trojas Hunt, same thing. Two points in four minutes as the bench is emptied. MGH, not so much with the playing time of, of late because Nemanja is back. And now he's starting to play a little better. And things get a little bit, just a little feisty with uh, Aaron Afalo in Portland, or Portland, in uh, Orlando in the next game as we will move on. We will graciously move on, even though that was a very, very wonderful, wonderful night. January the 14th, Sunday, January the 14th, Minnesota Vikings heading to the NFC Championship game again. Purple Mafia, a fresh new Purple Mafia is up on iTunes, ready for you to listen to that one. Of course, do check that out. Uh, yeah. Then things change dramatically. Of course, the Wolves giving up 100 points throughout the week, but then they stop scoring a bit. Uh, 102 against Orlando and only 98 against Houston. Ouch, ouch. Uh, yeah, this these weren't so good. Um, just kind of a... I don't know what, what you'd call this one. What, what Was it lackadaisical? Was it just lack of focus? Was it just every time we go to Orlando, we lose? I don't know what it was, but it was something like that. <laughs> As uh, Tony Montana would say, something like that. That's one of his lines in that famous movie, of course. Uh... <laughs> oh, man. I'm going crazy, but I just, yeah. I mean, this was not a very fun game. And, of course, Scarface is the name of that movie. That's Garnett's favorite movie, apparently. I remember reading that many, many years ago. In, uh, was it Sports Illustrated for Kids or something? Way back in the day when he was young. Um, obviously, he was like 19 at the time, but that explains the F-bombs every 10 seconds with Kevin Garnett because there are a couple of F-bombs in Scarface. Just a couple. Not that many. About five, about 500. Jimmy Bubba Bubba Buckets, as they like to say. Uh, 28 points. That's the highlight. Other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play, I guess? Todd Gibson was good in the game. And there was an entertaining little brawl between Nemanja Bialica and Aaron Afalo as they would tangle time and time again on rebounds and such. You know, guys, just they get, they get feisty. They push around when there's a rebound situation. And they get overly physical, posting up this and that. And as the ball was up in the air, Nemanja's arm kind of curled around Aaron Afalo. Afalo gets goes ape bleep. Literally, I, I don't know what happened, if it was crack cocaine or what. Okay, I'm not going to go that far, but he responded about like a crack addict might, you know, in a situation maybe where, yeah, he didn't get the stuff and things went ape bleep. Not that I would know anything about that, of course, but it's just that's what I've heard. They're kind of kind of dangerous stuff. Uh, he literally, I, I've, I literally saw a legitimate punch, uh, a swing. It grazed Billy to luckily. That would have been a pretty big hit. Like, again, the Kermit Washington one, people always compare the really legitimate punches, Kermit Washington on Rudy Tomjanovich of the Rockets back in the day. Kermit Washington of the Lakers. You never saw him play again. Kermit Washington. That was his last game, his last moment ever in the NBA. Can you believe that? Um, that was something else. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a pretty damn big-time swing. The last major swing I saw like that was Shaquille O'Neal towards... What was that guy's name? He played with the Wolves for a couple minutes uh, in his final season. 
Oh my God! It'll it'll Brad Miller. Yep, I knew it was Brad. Brad Miller. It was uh, that was a swing. I mean, that could have killed somebody. <laughs> it was, <laughs> and, and that one kind of sort of grazed uh, Brad Miller. Maybe barely. More, it was more like I feel the breeze type of thing. You probably felt the breeze from it. That's for sure. But a pretty aggressive swing from a follow, and then the Manya Bialit says most of you probably already saw anyway. Put Aaron a follow in a headlock, supposedly protecting uh, Bialita and. Aaron Afalo from himself there is what uh, Bielita said in the locker room. And I kind of agree because that could have been, you know, that could have been the end of Afalo in the NBA possibly. I swear, you know, I mean, maybe or at least like a one-year suspension. Instead, he'll he'll get a suspension for this. It's got to at least be five, maybe ten games. I hope Bielita doesn't get suspended. I don't think he will. He might get a fine though. Something. Obviously, when you get ejected from a game, you get a fine. And both players were ejected. They got called for a technical earlier in the game for a feisty play. Um, I don't know. Guess a lot of guys don't like Bielitsa sometimes. Uh, we'll try to leave that one alone at the moment. But overall, the game was about... That was about it. That was the most entertaining moment of the game, I think. Um, there were some good moments here and there. Jimmy Butler hit some pretty cool shots as he was almost falling out of bounds. Sure, he had that nice three-pointer. An overall 28-point game, not bad, and he kept the Wolves in the game, so all the credit to Jimmy Butler for that. Good job, Carl, with yet another double-double. Too many minutes for the starters, I think, a little bit, but oh, you know what? I've seen worse. Uh, Tyus Jones was solid in the minutes he was out there keeping the offense going, this and that. You know, we always like to just say that because we, we can, and yes, he does. It's enjoyable to watch, and he deserves the minutes he gets, and he deserves more minutes. Um... Jeff Teague, like nobody particularly shot super well. Bill Butler, without a doubt, was the highlight of the night. 50%, this and that, of the Wolves in a positive way rather than just guys getting in a fight, we'll say. Uh, the Wolves did shoot almost 44% from downtown, so that's good. 9 of 10 free throws, that's the problem. Only 10 free throws attempted in the game. Great that you made 9 of 10, but gosh, you know, or Orlando at 19. I mean, that's the difference right there. I mean, just get to the damn line. That would help once in a while rather than, again, getting swatted, this and that. <sighs> Frustrating. Uh, Carl Carl and Jimmy, I mean, they're leading the way. I mean, Carl Anthony Towns did get the three blocks, this and that, but the three-pointers are back, unfortunately. The three-pointers, hardcore back in this game and in the next one as Orlando was scorching threes. They were getting a lot of attempts. They missed a lot as well, but... They missed a lot, but I mean, yeah, they attempted 31, and most of them were pretty open. So this was a sign of things to come. That's why Orlando only won up with uh, 108, because they missed so many threes. But overall, generally speaking, Orlando was just a teeny bit better, and I don't know, we just never win there as well. Fournier was definitely the guy that uh, <laughs> tore up the wolf throughout the night. 6 of 12, I mean, that's pretty much, yeah. I mean, when a guy shoots that well, you're in big trouble. you got to hope somebody else on your side is doing the same. Butler kind of was, but not quite. DJ Augustine also. Oh, faked out Butler pretty good on one. Got Butler flailing and then nailed that three-pointer. DJ Augustine, nice game. 18 points off the bench. Even six assists added. And the banana was not too good. He was peeled a bit because DJ Augustine outplayed the banana. That's Alfred Payton. And again, it's not anything offensive. It's his hair. His hair is... If that doesn't look like a banana, I don't know what to tell you. It does. So that's why I call him the banana. So let's move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's move on. Frickin' Rockets game. Uh, it was on TNT, and Kevin McHale, I don't blame him for a second, for choosing Boston over Houston when it came to the two uh, places to go on TNT that night. Very cool to see Kevin McHale with the Boston Celtics in uh, TD America Garden there with uh, Kevin Harlan. You know, and a lot of you, I don't know if you're too young. Some, of, some people are too young, and some of you remember. Kevin Harlan and Kevin McHale. Do you remember those days? Huh? Do you remember those days back when Garnett was a complete toothpick? He was a toothpick, right? And even the year before, the, the toothpick at the time showed up. He was a toothpick, man. 90, 95, 96, Garnett's rookie year. Kevin McHale and Kevin Harlan. Oh, that was fun. That was fun. McHale has a personality. You know, we can make fun of his GM, this and that. He made a pretty good draft pick in Garnett. He made a nice move at the time for Marbury that now haunts us forever, but whatever. <laughs> it was uh, it was well thinking at the time because you get this dynamic point guard with Kevin Garnett. Unfortunately, the old uh, whatever they call it, that thing they do in the NFL, a little of that uh, uh, check up on their mental makeup and this and that would have been a good idea. Not that Marbury's stupid, he just doesn't have, didn't have the mental makeup to be on the Timberwolves, apparently. He didn't want to be here as much as he did want to be here. He didn't want to be here. 
All he cared about was New York, New York, New York, and then that bit him in the ass once he got there after a couple of years. But uh, I love Kevin McHale's personality, and I love when he's able to tell stories. I, I just, oh, and it was cool to see him in uh, TD America Garden. Um, not the best game ever in Philadelphia. That's a city we don't want to think too positively of at the moment. But the Sixers look good for a little while as the Celtics surge back in that one. <coughs> but let's get to the point here. This was, well, of course, the 18th of January, 116-98. The Wolves get pounded by the Houston Rockets. James Harden's back, but, well, it was more of the Aaron Gordon show. Eric Gordon, not Aaron Gordon. I'm getting it mixed up with the Orlando guy, so that's an honest mistake. Tyus Jones, 13 points out the bench. One of his better games of the year offensively, I would have to say. He was making three A's, and he was solid out there. But overall, this game stunk. Yeah, just a bummer. Guys were open from three, catch and shoot, catch and shoot pretty much throughout the night. Jimmy Butler was good, solid, 23 points. Carl was excellent in the game, five blocks including a couple highlight blocks along the way. One on James Harden that I really did like very much. 22 and 16, again, five blocks in the game, even added two steals. So Carl is adding more of that defensive approach. Too many three points attempted from Carl, one of seven. I mean, when it's not going, it's not going, and you have to keep forcing it up, and I know you're behind, and you're hoping to catch up. Wiggins was, I, I thought he could have taken more threes from downtown. He was three of five. Why not keep feeding him instead of one of seven with Carl Anthony Towns? But I don't know. It's just one of those kind of games. I, I don't know why you're having Carl shooting that many threes when clearly Wiggins was making it from the outside. Uh, he had a nice floater in the game as well along the way. One other thing that i got to talk about, I was going to mention this earlier, but what's going on with wearing the, the road uniforms at home nowadays? It seems to be a major trend of late, particularly for the Wolves. It's like road white and home blue now. I, what's going on? Are we the NFL? Are we the NHL? Or what's the deal? Uh, hockey used to be home white and road, you know, dark jersey, whatever. Darker jersey, red, or black, whatever it is. Um, but it seems to be a trend, especially with the Wolves of late. The Wolves are almost always wearing the white ones on the road. Um, Orlando wore blue at home, and the Rockets wore red at home. And I don't know. I don't know if it's some kind of a fun thing, but that they're but they're going to go back to normal and do this on occasion. I don't mind doing it on occasion because it's entertaining at times, or it's just it's just changing things up a little bit. It's not even if it's entertaining, but I don't think I want this to be the norm, though. I think it should be home white, road blue, or road whatever your your team color is. That would I don't know. Just just do this on occasion, not all the time, like a Sunday afternoon or a TNT broadcast or something like that. So, yeah, but overall, not a very good night for the Wolves. Wiggins, you could tell he was going to be making shots from the outside. His defense wasn't so good. Uh, but then again, it felt like nobody's defense was good. As Houston was just hitting everything. God, 4 of 6 from Luke Richard Monmute. Luke Richard Monmute, 4 of 6 from downtown. <laughs> Chris Paul, the jackass, 4 of 8 from downtown. Eric Bleepin' Gordon, though, 7 of 13. Oh, just like Fournier, just another, you know... Just another scorch job from the outside, just like Fournier. And that's this is the kind of stuff that's got the Wolves beaten the past on a regular basis the last 10 years. Seriously, the last 10 bleeping years was, oh, this guy magically gets hot from the outside and there's nothing you can do about it. And it's just the same old story. And the Wolves get beat by 20 points. The Wolves get beat by 15 points. The Wolves get beat by 30 points. You know, this and that. By, by the Warriors or, you know, some of those crazy Warriors games when Johnny Flynn was here. Oh, my. Um... But that's what this kind of felt like. It just was kind of old school Wolves basketball. Or not old school, but kind of recent yucky Wolves basketball in the Kurt Rambis days when we got scores from the outside. But then again, you could say that with any coach. This happened a lot last year. It happened earlier this year. But this was kind of going back a bit, taking some steps back in this game. I'm not surprised. Houston's really good, this and that. And, of course, that's just their game. And they've been like this for a long time now, for a couple of years at least. And they've got a nice team put together. You don't have to like them. Uh, Harden was yucky throughout the night, 3 of 15. But it didn't matter because, again, even Capella was just getting whatever he wanted for the most part down low when he got the chance in limited minutes. But uh, Eric Gordon, that guy's scorching that net, and he did it last time to the Wolves, to be quite honest. So not the best game, taking some steps back, and that's kind of the story here. So now we will... Pass out the awards. This week, the Alpha Wolf is going to go to Carl Anthony Towns. I thought he was better than anybody throughout the week. Uh, he was blocking shots. He got double-doubles in every game, and he was probably the best player in three out of four games here. The Johnny Flynn Memorial. I don't know. You know, it's like nobody was that terrible this week. Nobody really made me mad. 
Aaron to follow, I guess. I'm going to give it to Aaron to follow. Because, I mean, I can't give it to Teague, even though he had a pretty yucky game. Jimmy Butler was yucky. Or, not yucky. Jimmy Butler was not yucky. Jimmy Butler was good throughout the week. Wiggins, he wasn't that bad. He, he, he had some moments. Todd Gibson, obviously, I would have a hell of a time giving him a Flynn Memorial. Teague had some really nice games this week. And it's not like he killed us out there. Crawford, though, oh, six, zero points. He's, he was the Flynn of the Houston game. This is the kind of game you were hoping from something from Crawford, so that did not help. I think the Wolves have had a much better night. I mean, Crawford over 3, 0 of 6, but at least Thibodeau didn't let him shoot that much and keep him in super long. He shouldn't get like a 30-minute night from Crawford or something off the bench when he's shooting like that. It seems like guys get more minutes when they're stinking, and that's ridiculous. That happens way too much. But Carl, for me, is the Alpha Wolf. The Flynn Memorial, it's going to go to Aaron Afalo. That guy is too much, man. <laughs> I, he was he, he that that was a that was an overreaction. It's one thing you get frustrated and such, but my God, that was way over the top. I mean, this isn't you know the mean streets of Detroit or whatever you want to call it. I have no idea what to even call it. I'm just making something up as I go here when I say that. But it's just not the time or place for that. What what what's the reason really? State the purpose. So we will. End it with that. Aaron Apollo, Flynn Memorial, Alpha Wolf, Carl Anthony Towns. Let's take a break. Let's preview four games right after this. Hey, Apollo, you try that again. I'm coming after you. And we are back here on Timberwolves Explosion, segment number two, four games to preview. So let's roll tape. Let's get going. Saturday, the 20th of January, the day before the NFC Championship game, the Minnesota Timberwolves will host the Toronto Blue Jays. Oh, I mean the Maple Leafs. No, it's the Raptors, and they're kind of good, actually. Yeah, they're kind of good. Um, they're having that uh, resurgent season, and they're doing a good job for Mr. Dwayne Casey. Kind of similar to the Wolves, not so good from the outside, necessarily. Mediocre in the rebounding, but they're scoring points, and obviously their defense is really good for Toronto. That's kind of been the case. Uh, Wolves' defense is supposed to be good, but sometimes it isn't. Uh, DeMar DeRozan will be starting in the All-Star game, so good for him, along with some of the usual suspects out there. Uh, Mr. Embiid of the Sixers will be starting in the All-Star game, so good for him. I gotta hope Butler is gonna be an easy choice to reserves. He's not gonna start because, of course, the fans all hate the Timberwolves. So, because we're like 19th in all the voting, it's like ridiculous. My God, <laughs> but it is what it is, right? Demar Derozan's averaging about 25 points a game. He's been wonderful. Would have been a nice pick over Johnny Flynn. Of course, everybody talks about Steph Curry, this and that versus Flynn or the Northern Cal guys. I like to call him because I don't like to say his name very much because it gets said way too much everywhere else. Um, because I'm just jealous. I'm jealous. No, I'm not. Uh, DeMar DeRozan, though. Hello, 25 points a game. It took him a little while to get going, but he's been pretty damn good the last three years or so, at least. And he was good before that, averaging 20-plus. DeMar DeRozan would have been a nice pick also over Johnny Bleepin' Flynn. Um, boy. <laughs> Hopefully Andrew Wiggins can get to that kind of a level at some point, someday, sometime. Butler's kind of about there. Kyle Lowry, I'm glad the Wolves didn't sign him to that massive contract. Literally double the money of Jeff Teague. Yet people are like, well, Rubio is cheaper. Can you stop mentioning that? That's another name I don't want to say very often on this show. Along with the guy on the Bulls, uh, Zach Levine. You know what? God bless Zach Levine. And I'm not trying to be mean. Boy, does he look good, his form and this and that. But I'm not going to say we let him go. Have you not watched Jimmy Butler score 38, have 38 point games? Have you not watched Jimmy Butler literally take this team under his wing the last like two like the last month or so he's literally transformed the identity of this team the way he's played out there you're seeing stronger defense you're seeing guys that are more assertive and we're talking about Zach Levine we're talking about Chris Gunn we're talking about Rubio oh my lord please please people enough i get sick and tired of seeing posts oh look at Levine oh he's got swag who cares does Jimmy Butler have swag when he said that you can't bleep with me, you know what? You know what I care about? Putting the ball in the basket, making big shots, playing good defense, and the damn scoreboard. I don't care if you have swag or not. Just win games. That's all. Just win games. I don't care about your swagger. I don't care about the smirk on your face. Go ahead and play with confidence. That's good. But that word is overused and it's nonsense. I don't give a rat's ass about swag. 
Toronto. <clears throat> yes, they're having a hell of a season. They're number two in the Eastern Conference, and the Cleveland Cavaliers are getting blown out and blowing leads. They're kind of like Blasters Timberwolves of late. They're blowing huge leads, and I don't understand. Uh, Toronto 30 and 13. They're second in the Atlantic and second in the Eastern Conference behind the Boston Celtics, who continue to have good games, but not perfect. They're surely not perfect. Toronto's only two and a half games behind the Celtics. Philly is ten and a half behind, and they're they're an annoying team for the Wolves. Obviously, Embiid versus Towns is kind of a annoying matchup, but it is what it is. And people complaining about Embiid being a starter and Towns not being a starter. Who won the game? Who outplayed the other? Come on, guys. You know I'm not a homer. Come on, come on, guys. Who outplayed the other? So I love Carl Anthony Towns, and I want him to succeed. And I hate that Joel Embiid's always hurt. Uh, but it is what it is, you know. I mean, head-to-head matchups mean something. They they do. They mean something. Start beating these guys, Carl. And he's been a lot better though ever since then. And thank you, Joel Embiid, for motivating Carl Anthony Towns a little bit more, a little bit extra. I know he doesn't necessarily need motivation all the time, but at least something, something, you know, waking him up a little bit. To Toronto. See, look at me. I'm already sidetracking. I wanted to get through this segment. <laughs> Carl Kyle Lowry, obviously expensive player. Serge Ibaka has been okay. He's certainly not the guy he was at the Thunder, but he's still blocking some shots, this and that. If the Wolves are going to beat Toronto, it's going to be in Minnesota, not in uh, Toronto. That's that type of thing. I'm really hoping for a victory in this one. we got some tough games coming up. Uh, where do we go from this? Uh, this is a two-game series. The Wolves will be playing 10 days, 10 days from Saturday on Tuesday, the 30th of January, as we wrap up that month, this month, in Toronto, Ontario. That one's probably a loss, but I don't know. Maybe Wiggins will go off and all that. I do expect Wiggins to have a nice game, and he needs to have a nice game. I, I want to see more from Wiggins. Obviously, Butler and Carl, you're going to get what you're going to get. I've loved what I've seen from Carl this last week. Don't be surprised to see Butler. Well, Butler's going to get over 20 points, i got to think, but I'm hoping. I'm on my knees here. Wiggins, this is it right here. Just like he did with Cleveland, just have, you know... Bring, bring that more often. That would be great. Uh, upper 20s from Andrew Wiggins. I think he'll lead the Wolves in scoring. I'm stepping on in good faith that he will. And somehow, someway, the Wolves win by like 3, 103 to 100, that type of thing. Kind of a defensive battle a bit. Uh, Toronto's been struggling, so that's one of the reasons why I have a little bit of hope. Uh, Toronto beat Cleveland by 34 points on the 11th. Holy my goodness. Uh, the couple days before that, they lost to Miami by one. Golden State, uh, they lost by two to the Warriors. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Philadelphia beat, uh, who's playing pretty damn good all of a sudden, uh, beat the uh, Toronto Raptors, and then the, Ra- the Raptors beat uh, Detroit most recently by five. Toronto will play San Antonio before they play Minnesota the next night. So back-to-back factor also. Low-scoring game, I think. Low, well, kind of low scoring. Wolves win like 105, 100, something like that. 105, 98. Andrew Wiggins will be the leading scorer, in my humble opinion. So now we will continue after this one. Wolves will be playing the Los Angeles Clippers. The Los Angeles Clippers, who've been playing a lot better. A lot better. Uh, it was an entertaining battle between them and the Houston Rockets the other night, and the fighting and all that. And Chris Paul showing more of what a dingle hopper he is. And apparently, it. Apparently, a lot of people hated him there in Clipperland. Uh, the, the, like players, yeah. A lot of them did not like him. And, you know, remember when he was with the New Orleans Hornets and how likable he was? You know, what happened to this guy? It's like in the later stages of his time in New Orleans, he just changed. Weird. Um, and, of course, yes, New Orleans Hornets were now the Pelicans and then the Charlotte. Yeah, that's where the goofiness comes in. It's not too confusing. It's just weird. Uh, this is an NBA TV game. The 22nd, Monday the 22nd of January, where the Vikings will hopefully be NFC champions and playing New England or Jacksonville in the Super Bowl. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully. As I was talking last week, that hopefully the Vikings will be in the NFC championship game and will get a win. And we had the Minneapolis Miracle, the whole thing with Portland. Well, this Clipper game is the uh, aftermath of the NFC championship game. Lord help me. Please win this one. This one is in Los Angeles. Yep. In Los Angeles, we get a three-game roadie. On the West Coast, Clipperland, Portland, and then a back-to-back, Portland and Golden State. That's what it is. That's 24 and 25 there. Already a month after Christmas. Wow, it's been a while. Clippers are playing much better. Lou Williams, what is going on with Lou Williams? He is having a hell of a season. Was he ever this good? Wasn't he just mostly a spark plug with teams like Houston and the Lakers and, and the uh, the uh, even the Philadelphia 76ers years ago? He's been all over the place. 
He's playing great. He's had some huge wins, and the Clippers have won all of their last five games, including trouncing the Warriors by 19 on the 10th of January. Now, that's a back-to-back situation because the Warriors played on the 9th in the previous with Toronto there, but uh, if it was Toronto, I believe it was, yeah. Um, But still, no, it couldn't have been because they played Sacramento the next night. But, uh, wow, they beat the Warriors by 19. I mean, wow, Clippers. Five wins in a row, they beat the uh, Kings in Sacramento by six. And this was at Golden State, by the way. By, uh, that's crazy. Back-to-back, they sweep the back-to-back, all in California, so the traveling is not too bad. But still, and then just two nights later, Sacramento again, a home-and-home home type of situation. Home and away, you know, you get the idea. 19-point uh, victory over the Sacramento Kings. They beat the Rockets. Wow! They beat the Rockets and the Warriors in the same five-game stretch. Wow! 11-point victory over Houston, and they beat Denver by only five. That's funny. Uh, Just most recently, they will be heading to Utah and then hosting the Timberwolves the next game. Lou Williams is tearing it up. Blake Griffin has been often injured on on and off, but he's having a pretty solid season also. His numbers are up, and obviously with Chris Paul out of the way, it seems like the whole morale of this club is improved. Uh, Danilo Gallinari is often injured, this and that, but when he's healthy, he can shoot well. He's not shot well this year, but it seems like every time the Wolves play against him, he does. That type of thing. <laughs> Patrick Beverly is what he is. He's been oft injured. DeAndre Jordan, yep, he's got that asshole game. That's what I always call him. <laughs> he's got an asshole game. I mean, he does. You know, he's just, he's an asshole the way he plays, but he's a good at He's good at it. He's good at being an asshole. Just, just jamming in people's face, you know, just magically getting that rebound at the last second and just stuffing it real hard and playing with that attitude down low. As much as I hate playing against him and I hate his guts, I'd love him here, you know, but again, I'm not going to give up the, the whole moon for him. And that's what the Clippers would want, obviously, because his value is insane. Uh, DeAndre Jordan's only missed two games this year. Lou Williams has played every game and over 23 points a game, 42% from downtown, 90% at the line, and the guy gets to the free throw line. A late career surge for Lou Williams. What a nice season. Uh, easily his best year in the NBA. I never saw this. Wesley Johnson's still there. Old whatever. He can't do anything. Seven points a game. 33% from downtown. That's that's Wesley Johnson. He hasn't changed a bit. But watch him scorch us. Uh, I'm not going to pick a win here, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, Wolves. I'm going to pick a very narrow win with the Wolves over Toronto, which might be stepping on a limb. This is a tough week. Wolves are not going to win in Clipperland. They're playing great. Right now, and I'm not cheering for them at all because I hate the Clippers, but I'm imp- I'm impressed with how they're playing of late, and they get credit for it. Uh, DeAndre Jordan obviously is tops in the league in field goal percentage because that's how he is. He gets to that, he he stays down low and he puts it in the basket. I mean, it's that simple. I'm shocked he's only averaging a block a game, but well, he's doing everything else. 15 rebounds, and he gets a trillion offensive. About five and five of them are offensive rebounds a game, and that's that asshole game. Those rebounds and putbacks that. Piss you off. And <laughs> he gets, again plays with that attitude. <sighs> Not going to win the game. Uh-uh. Uh, Clippers are going to have something in the, way, in the way they shoot from the outside. Lou Williams is going to give us a hard time. Um, Butler, this is a Butler type of game. In the past, it would have been Zach Levine. I could also say Wiggins. But uh, this is a Butler game for me. And I'd like to see Carl play well against DeAndre Jordan. At times he does, at times he doesn't. It's, it's a back and forth mano y mano. And it's games like this what would really help Carl Anthony Towns get more votes for the All-Star uh, All-Star game. And I think he deserves to be a reserve. Butler, that's like a no-brainer. If he's not a reserve All-Star, I don't know what they're doing. Um, I don't know. Uh, this is Butler's chance to maybe shut down Lou Williams a bit, which would be great, uh, hopefully. But yeah, I expect to see Butler and Lou Williams have an interesting mano y mano kind of game. Uh, of course, Blake Griffin, Taj Gibson, that'll be interesting. Gibson will probably be solid. He's played well in, in L.A. in the past, and I've liked what I've seen. But I do think the Clippers win this thing. Uh, 115 to 105, 106, something like that. 115. It's going to be about a 9, 10-point victory. The Clippers will pull away. The Wolves will hang in. It'll be a game of runs where the Clippers might build a pretty big lead. The Wolves come back. They come storming back, but then the Clippers pull away at the end. Uh, Butler will lead the Wolves in scoring in this game. Next. January the the 24th, Wednesday, the first of a back-to-back, Portland, Oregon. Yeah, this could be a really tough week for the Wolves. I love all the way the Wolves have played against Portland. We've had some wonderful games. Is this going to be one of those where Lillard or McCollum goes out for 30, or both of them do? Uh, Their three-point percentage, they're fifth in the league in that category. They're three games above 500, but the Wolves have played well. 
against this club this season. 2-0. and He had a one-point one victory over the Blazers in Minnesota, and then a 17-point victory last week after the Minneapolis Miracle. Uh, now we go to Portland, the 24th, and March the 1st in Portland, Oregon. And I'm saying it correctly. Unlike most people, they call it Oregon. It's Oregon, yes, because I've met people from Oregon, and that's what they say. Yes, they say, don't ever call it Oregon. Call it Oregon. <laughs> Not that that makes me smarter or better than anybody. It's just, you know, okay. I just, that's, I've been told from the horse's mouth there. So, uh, Portland, two out of their last five. They've recently beaten Phoenix and Indiana. A little two-game win streak, they, including a 14-point uh, victory over Indiana. Not not bad. Uh, and, of course, beating Phoenix. Portland scores over 100 every freaking game. Every freaking game they score over 100, and I think they will again. This is going to be a tough one, man. And it's obviously all about the backcourt. Nurkic is what he is. Shabazz Napier, you know, whatever. It's all about the backcourt. Uh, Jimmy B Butler always plays well against Portland, but so does Wiggins. Uh, I'd like to see more out of Wiggins in this one. Wiggins has had some good games against Portland in the past. And, you know, if the Wolves are going to win this game, they're going to need a mid... To, um, they're going to need like a 25 type of uh, point game from Andrew Wiggins. Butler, you know... I hope and pray he goes off for some crazy numbers, like 30-plus points. He didn't do it last time. He did it the time before when it was a mano a mano, uh, 108, 107 victory at home. That was so fun on December the 18th. Uh, that was a very entertaining week, and Butler went ape bleep the whole time. They're going to need a big game to win this one on the road because winning in Portland is tough, and the Wolves have had hard, a hard time in Portland pretty much forever. It's one of those places where this is their only team. They don't have anything else. So, obviously, the fan base is a, a bit crazy. They're kind of obnoxious, and it's, it's a tough place to play. It's all about the backcourt, this and that. It's really Damian Lillard and McCollum versus Butler and Wiggins. It really is that to me. Uh, of course, Carl, more than capable of putting up huge numbers against the Blazers, and if he goes off for 30 and 16 and, and three blocks or something... I expect the Wolves to win the basketball game. Uh, Jeff Teague has also played well against this team. See, it's like a lot of guys have had good games <laughs> against this team. And I'm getting a little obnoxious when I get into this back-and-forth uh, situation here. Um, it's going to be somebody, yeah, obviously Butler and Wiggins, they got to match up well. But, of course, Jeff Teague, he's played well against Portland in both games this, this year. I like what Jeff Teague brings. I, I do expect 20-plus points from Teague again. But again, you need more from Wiggins this time around if we're going to win the game. If Wiggins doesn't get mid-20s and up in the game, I think the Wolves lose. I'm going to step out in good faith because I do not want to pick a 1-3 in three week because it's the second game of the back-to-back. -back. And I think the Wolves will play with urgency against the Portland Trailblazers, even though you might see some serious urgency against uh, the Warriors on TNT next week. Maybe that will be one of those fun, fun battles on TNT where the Wolves pull it off on national television like we did a couple years back. But... Uh, if the Wolves are going to win one of these two games, it's going to be the Portland one. And we're talking 122 to, yeah, that's what I'm stepping on in good faith here. It's going to be something high scoring. Uh, 118 to 114, the Wolves pull away. Baller make it some free throws. Teague make it some free throws down the stretch. Wiggins will get 25 plus in the game. I'm stepping out in good faith. The Wolves will win the game. But one of Lillard and McCollum will at least get 30 in the game. And it's going to be intense. Maybe both of them, of course. Both of them will at least get 20. Guaranteed in this game. Um, <laughs> McCollum, obviously, six three-pointers, something along the like. That's just who he is, uh, particularly against us. Yes, yes, McCollum, you're better than Shabazz Muhammad. Yes, McCollum, you're better than Shabazz Muhammad. Yes, McCollum, you're better than Shabazz Muhammad. Yes, yes, you've reminded us every time we play it. He doesn't say it, he just does it with his actions. Actions speak louder than words. Uh, 11 months until Christmas. Get ready, start your countdown. Minnesota goes to Golden State on TNT, or should I say Oakland, California. First place in the Northwest versus first place in the Pacific. It doesn't get much better than that. A couple of first place teams in TNT. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a very tight matchup. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, Warriors last time this season in Oracle beat the Wolves by 24. Oh, yeah. November the 8th. I don't think it's going to be this bad, but I do expect the Warriors to win the game. It's going to be up there. 125 to 101 last time around. It's going to take a crazy game from somebody. Somebody's going to have to go off for 30-something. They're going to have to... Have to if the Wolves win this game, they're going to have to keep the Warriors under 115, something like that. 
it's going to have to be a crazy game. Uh, cra- a solid defense down the stretch. The Warriors get theirs, this and that. But then big defensive plays down the stretch will be the uh, the difference, in my humble opinion. Uh, Clay Thompson at 28 last time made half his threes. And he's the guy that's actually torched the Wolves more than anybody else. Curry does what he does. He has his moments. But Clay Thompson, historically, has been the guy that's torched the Timberwolves in Oracle Arena. Why well, call it Golden State? It's Oracle Arena. So, uh, really, last time around, Carl Anthony Towns was the best player in the game. Butler, 11 points. 11 freaking points. That's not going to get it done, and that's why the Wolves only got 101 against uh, the Warriors. So, yes, it's going to take somebody getting 30-plus in the game and some serious defense. Is it Butler? Does Wiggins go 8 bleep? He had 17 in the game. He was solid, but, ah, somebody's going to have to go crazy in the game. Maybe Crawford has a huge, huge night, 28 points off the bench in like 25 minutes, something crazy like that. Uh, Gorgie obviously is a huge key every game, but he, he it's going to take some tight, solid defense, some nice uh, nice shot blocking at the last second, this and that. Um, other than that, though, I mean, Golden State is first place in field goal percentage, first place in three-point percentage, first place in overall points scored, 11th in rebounding, blah, 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 blah. They are just crazy. Steph Curry's back to averaging almost 28 points a game. True Durant's at 26, Clay Thompson 21. We all know who they are. They're all over 40% from three-point range. Clay Thompson almost f- freaking 50% from three-point range. And this is a guy who doesn't attempt three three-pointers a game. He attempts his about seven and a half a game. Uh, Curry attempts ten threes a game. That's too much. <laughs> That's probably why his percentage isn't as high as Clay Thompson's. That's too many. But, God, 92% from the line. All of those guys are in the upper 80s and low 90s at the free-throw line. And it's like you wonder why they win. Well, yeah, that's why. I mean... The object of the game is to put the ball in the basket, and it goes in. It just does. <laughs> That's a shout-out to a very old uh, line I said back in episode 58 or something. I believe it was State of the Timberwolves 2010, where I said the object of the game is to put the ball in the basket, and it didn't go in. Well, in this case for the Warriors, it just goes in, and it just does. <laughs> I'm Rick Caspi. Well, we see why he didn't re-sign with the Wolves because he's having fun there in Northern Cal. He used to be with Sacramento. He's back in Northern Cal again. And, well, they're back where they were before, leading the league in everything. Except, I don't know. Except uh, being polite, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Winning percentage, 800. Uh, it's going to take a huge game and some huge defensive plays down the stretch by the guys, by the likes of Carl Anthony Towns and Jimmy Butler and, and again, Gorgie Zhang. It's those three defensively, more than Wiggins. Uh, I'd love to see big defense from Wiggins. Of course, Gibson's more than capable of it, but I, you know, that's that's the norm from Todd, Todd Gibson. Of course, Carl and Jimmy are big, but I mean, they're more the mono mono guys that are going against, you know, big, big moments, this and that, uh, mismatches and all that. Uh, Butler, it's really going to be key. If he can contain Thompson, I mean, he got creamed by Thompson last time. But right now, Golden State's going to win the game 122 to 108, 110, something like that. The Warriors will pull away significantly, kind of like Houston, and hang on to it and blah, blah, blah. So that's it. That's the end of the reviews. Minnesota 2-2 two two this week. We'll be back for some fan interaction right after this. Back here on Tim Rules Explosion segment number three, fan and direction segment. Let's get going. Want to thank all of you on Twitter here at Wolves Explosion at Wolves Explosion because Tim Rules Explosion doesn't fit for that one at Wolves Explosion. Tene Brown, Levi Brown, and Vinrock Vince Germano retweeted the most recent show. Or actually, it's the Pumpa and yes, Vinrock did as well. The Pumpa did retweet the show. Thank you, Pumpa. I uh, appreciate that very much. Yep, thank you always, Vince Germano of the Courtside Podcast. Tene. And Levi Brown out of New Zealand. You guys are great. Thank you so very much. Tanae Brown posts something from Jimmy Butler here. He says, uh, hashtag MVP, players real plus minus, and his numbers of possessions played, dude should be getting serious MVP consideration. Hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see. RPM wins provide an estimate of the number of wins each player has contributed to his team's win total 
on the season. RPM wins include the the player's real plus minus and the player numbers possession played. Uh, what surprises me more is Cat at seven, Taj at thirty eight. Wow, that's crazy. So, hmm, yeah. Where is the link though? It, it's in there. Shoot, because this is more of an image. Ah, oh, bummer. It's in there somewhere. But yeah, I'll probably have to come back to that one. But uh, oh, maybe. Nope. That's an image, <laughs> but no. And overall, yeah, he's he. I think he should get MVP uh, consideration. Absolutely. Um, doesn't it doesn't mean you'll get it? Obviously, we know that. And of course, the lack of fan vote. But then again, who cares about fan votes necessarily? Sometimes some of that is just a popularity contest. Um, just the eye test itself, and the way the guy has led this team and changed the identity of this club to a more aggressive and not so much of a snowflake. Uh, you know, wilting tulip, whatever. I don't know. I, I can't think of the right term, but uh, that's basically what they've been. Shrinking violet uh, over the past X amount of years. Leon Bosch, uh, nice of you to mention me with all these other uh, people here. Thank you. Uh, Wolves cast, Wolves explosion, Tim Faulkness, huh, Daily Wolf, Dunking with Wolves. Thank you for having me in there. John Krasinski, Canis Hoops, PD Punch Drunk Wolves, and Britt Robson. Thank you, Leon. Uh, Leland. Bosch, he says, uh, with the Wolves tied for third in the West, is bench depth still a problem? If so, any midseason moves you'd like to see for a deep playoff run or just hang tight? Oh, I should have responded, but hopefully he's a listener, Leland. Well, um, generally, I think we can hang tight, but, you know, there's nothing, I'm, I'm not against, if there's something out there that doesn't, you're not having to give up the form for, like a Nerlens Noel, I'm not against that at all. Uh, I'm trying to think of some others out there. Nerlens Noel does intrigue me an awful lot, and I think that would help. Uh, he's got that shot-blocking ability, and that can, help, you know, again, change shots. You need that. And if you don't have to give up the farm for him, that's a guy that I'm interested in. Uh, obviously, he's going to cost money, but everybody costs money because of the way the Wolves are. Right now, that's definitely where I'm leaning towards is uh, Nerlens Noel, the first Noel. The first Noel. Okay, sorry. Levi Brown says, I can't stand watching the Rockets fire up three after three, but you can't argue with the results. I, I, I get you, especially that doggone Eric Gordon. He's a guy that was hurt so much, you forgot about him in the last ten, like not ten years, but the last five to seven years, and now there he is, because you remember him with the Clippers years ago, and of course the uh, New Orleans Hornets, as good as he was. He was with the Hornets for the longest time. Wound up with uh, the Rockets, this and that, of course, the Clippers and such. Uh, he's really come around, and he's, he's healthy, and he's making his threes, and good for him. Um, it was a nasty night, though, that's for sure. <laughs> yep, so that's the Twitter account. Let's uh, give a quick shout-out to Flips Army. Flips Army on Facebook, before I get to the Timberwolves Facebook page. Uh, Flips Army, I encourage you to join that page. Nice in-game threads, and of course, multiple... Uh, other posts, again, Wolves-related mostly. Of course, a lot of people all over this town. It's not just Flip's Army. It's every page out there. People are obsessed with former Tim Rules, so try to ignore those posts as best possible, right? Okay, now you can do whatever you want. It's your opinion, your thing, but me, it's... Uh, okay, I'm glad, you know, and I do, and I will admit that Zach Levine looks extremely smart, and I'm very happy to see that. But I'm not going to follow him religiously. I'll follow him with curiosity, sure. But I'm not going to be like, oh, 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 he's the one we let go. We're done. Jimmy Butler's pretty been pretty good for this team. This isn't Herschel Walker, okay, guys? It's not a Herschel Walker trade. All right, so we'll be fine. Um, there's <laughs> Jimmy Butler's shoe didn't come off, and that's it. You know, he had one good game for the Vikings, and then the Dallas Cowboys won three Super Bowls at the offensive line, and the draft pick that led to Emmett Smith and Aikman and all that. That was a pretty rough situation. Now, not everything led to Emmett Smith and... Uh, Aikman, but I believe one of the draft picks did help the uh, Cowboys get Emmett Smith and, of course, uh, some of the offensive linemen. I believe Nate Newton was one of them. So, yeah, that trade sucks. Let's get to the Timberwolves Facebook page. Facebook.com forward slash Timberwolves Explosion because Timberwolves Explosion does fit now. And, of course, these links will all be in the show description. Most recent episode 216, the springboard. No comments, but I do appreciate the likes out there. Thank you very much. I posted the whole uh, Jordan versus Bird. Wow, that was in honor of Larry Bird's 61st birthday. Oh, 61. Wow. If Larry Bird's 61, how old? Uh, yeah, we're, we're all getting old. Boy, that sucks. Uh, Vince Germano of the Courtside Podcast says legendary, and I agree. Um, man, love Larry Bird. Love it. <laughs> love Larry Bird. Love Michael Jordan, of course. That was a fun commercial. That was circa about 92. I like that shirt. That's literally like that Toe Jam and Earl music you heard in the background, like 91, 92. Like, just like the background of that game is a lot like uh, Michael Jordan's shirt there. I oh, I love the early 90s. Late 80s, early 90s. 
some of the legendary times of uh, of our past. Uh, continue here. I was saying how I'm tired of Trimble's fans obsessing over Ricky Rubio, Zach Levine, and Chris Dunn. Move on already. Yes, and I, that's what I'm saying. We have Jimmy Butler, and we are on our way to our 50-win season. We are seeing games and chip that we haven't seen in this town maybe ever. As good as Garnett was, and he could talk a good talk. Oh, he could talk a good talk, and I'm not about to rip Garnett, so don't switch me off and unsubscribe. But Jimmy Butler walks a good walk in that fourth quarter. He walks the walk. He does. He backs up his talk. He backs it up with big shots. He backs it up big time. Hitting big shot after big shot, getting them to the free throw line, drawing fouls that very few players can draw. Uh, he, he, he is one of those guys, like, the, like, you know, from the old school, that could draw a foul in his sleep. That's what Jimmy Butler has become. And that's what he was already. He did it to Wiggins, remember, way back in, like, the third game of Wiggins' career, a poor guy. He humiliated Andrew Wiggins. <laughs> <laughs> that was back when Andrew was averaging about six points a game. He was starting, but he was, you know, he was a shrinking violet. He was very, uh, very young, very raw at the time. But Wiggins has obviously developed nicely that season and got the uh, Rookie of the Year award. So good for him. And then little did we know Butler would be here one day working with uh, Andrew and helping him become more assertive. He's made players around him better. He's changed the identity of this franchise. So I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know, guys. So we we got to... We got a, a like a Flips Army and all these other Wolves pages. Some of you guys need to let Rubio and 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 uh, Chris Dunn, I, which I, you know, I, it's sad because we hardly even got to see him play. That's the the crappy part with him. Um, but you know, Zach Levine, you got to let it go. I mean, it, it's okay if Zach Levine has a wonderful career with Chicago. Good for him. I don't care about his swagger. I care about his you know his success. Swagger and success don't always lead to the same road. They don't they don't always do that. Uh, Tanae Brown, of course, out of New Zealand, and a Timberwolves explosion Hall of Famer, says, uh, seeing so many people on Twitter complain about Teague and wanting Rubio back. I was a massive Rubio fan, and yes, and that's okay. You know, I'm not ripping you for being a Rubio fan out there, guys. That might be like, why is he so, why is he such a jerk about Rubio? No, I'm not. I'm a jerk about, let's move on. That's what I'm a jerk about. <laughs> because we can't keep us obsessing over guys playing for other teams. You know, we, we can't keep doing that. Just like the whole Curry trade. Can we please move on? Or not trade, but Curry trade off, so to speak, uh, with the stupid Johnny Flynn move. Let's just worry about who we have, all right? So, okay, let's get back to here. Uh, I was a massive Rubio fan, but I'm more than happy with this team now. We've got a great chance at the three seed. Yeah, the Spurs have dropped off, and Kawhi is out. Yep, for a significant amount of time. Kawhi Leonard is out for a significant amount of time. But then we have hiccups like the freaking Orlando game, so yeah, we got to... Get to work here. Remember, we did lose a game without Kawhi. That was bullcrap uh, in San Antonio, right, right at the beginning of the year. Uh, today wraps up this uh, comment saying, we'd be struggling for an eighth seed had we not changed our team as much as we have. Exactly. That's a gold star right there. Exactly. That's a gold star statement. We would be struggling for the eighth seed. Yes. Absolutely. And we're not stunning the growth of Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns. It has it has <laughs> ignited them. It's woken them up. It seemed like you still had that shrinking vibe. And I keep using that stupid term, but it's, I almost had to call this show that. But uh, no, nah, that would... That's not the message I'm necessarily sending. This team is not a shrinking violet. And that's the whole point. They're not. And they kind of were for the longest time. Levine did, brought the swag and he'd have the 30-point games, but he'd also be clanging sometimes. 3 of, three of 11, 3 of 15, uh, 8 three-point attempts, and 1 make. You know, and of course, everybody's capable of having a horse bleep game. But, you know, just saying, <laughs> Zach Levine is no exception to that rule. All right? Okay, now I'll calm down. And I, I'm not ripping Zach at all. I I, I think he's going to be great, you know. Uh, Hall of Fame, no. Butler might be, though. Butler might be Hall of Fame, actually. If he keeps playing like this, yes, Butler might be. <laughs> so, again, Hall of Fame, not Hall of Fame. Did I make my point? Nicholas Simon says, Amen, Joey, bloody idiots. Nicholas Simon out of Australia. And wonderful addition to the show the last year, year and a half or so. Thank you, Nicholas. Love, love having you on board. So, that's the end of my post. I believe there were uh, uh, visitor posts or two. Yep, Vince Germano and Ali Sidikai. Yep, Vince Germano will wrap up this segment here. Yep. Uh, where am I? Uh, he says, Please name and shame the plonker who said Shabazz was better than Julius Randle. And that was a guy named Sean Grant. Uh, I, I won't say what page, because I don't want to piss anybody off, but 
oh, that guy is that guy is arrogant, and I don't like him. So I ended up uh, blocking that guy because he's just. It seems like he's just there to kind of just to rev up the the Rube the Rube fan base, and I, and it's annoying. Um, Rubio's the point guard of the future, not not just the present, but the future. And no, he's not. Um, <laughs> you know, you have every right to like Rubio, but it seemed like he's just doing that to grandstand. And that uh, I was talking about Julius Randle, uh, this and that. And then he said Shabazz is better, GTFO. No, Shabazz is not better than Julius Randle. Julius Randle is not the Greek freak or anything. He's nothing near that. But he's he's got a future in this league. Shabazz, he's one-dimensional, and sometimes he's not that good at it either. <laughs> you know? I mean, he's just kind of out of control. I, I think Shabazz still is ever capable of having a successful NBA career, but it's going to be a, an off-the-bench kind of guy, a, a rotation player. He's not... What Julius Randle can still be a starting power forward in this league, and for many, 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 many years, I think. Uh, he's not going to be an all-star that I can see, but m- maybe one day. I don't know. Uh, look at Lou Williams. So sometimes guys break out a little bit later. We'll see what happens with the juice Julius Randle, orange Julius Randle there in Los Angeles, California, to the Los Angeles Lakers with Chick Hearn. Okay, formerly with Chick Hearn. God, bl- God rest his soul. One of the great announcers in the history of professional sports. So that should wrap up this episode. Thanks, guys, for the uh, for the uh, in- interaction and the commentary, and uh, thanks for letting me share this uh, upcoming weekend with you here. I uh, want to give a quick shout out to the Courtside Podcast, of course. Hank McCoy. I keep calling him Hank McCoy, but it's Wayne Hunt, really. Uh, that was his nickname, Wayne Hunt. Vince Germano, Stu Benson. Wayne Hunt is generally a uh, Memphis Grizzlies fan. Vince Germano and Stu Benson, Lakers fans. They're all out of Australia. I forget if Stu Benson's from Sydney. I believe he is. Uh, and if Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Hank, uh, I keep calling him Hank again. That's stuck in my mind forever now. Wayne Hunt, also from Sydney. And Vince Germano from Melbourne, Australia, in the Victoria Providence. <laughs> yep, kind of like Canada there with the Providence. The Providence. So, uh... Yes, uh, wonderful show, the Courtside Podcast. It's a basketball show. They're not just Lakers and Grizzlies, but, you know, sure, everybody's going to favor their team a bit, but they don't just exclusively talk about those clubs. They're generally an NBA show. They're going to talk about the Rockets, the Warriors, the Wolves. The Wolves, yes, the Wolves. Uh, Vince Germano's second favorite team. Uh, And if the Wolves are doing well, hey, you know, they're going to really give us some praise. And if we're sucking, they're going to talk about that too, just like I do. You know, if we're sucking, we're sucking. You can't just sugarcoat everything all the time. So, uh, wonderful, wonderful show. Uh, Courtside Podcast on iTunes. And, of course, Podbean. Every show, like the regular, we'll call them the free shows, so to speak, are on iTunes. And there are occasional some premium, uh, premium shows. Those are on Podbean with all the free shows. So, if you want every single show, it's good to have iTunes, of course, the Apple device. Podbean is available on both uh, Apple and Android. Now, of course, if you have an Android phone, you want Double Twist. Just like to listen to this show, you want Double Twist or something like that, something that mirrors iTunes where it still gets the same feed, that type of thing as iTunes. There's other apps out there, but Double Twist is the one I'm more familiar with. Uh, But Podbean, you can get all the premium shows, one-year subscription, less than a small cup of coffee, or they call it tall, which is really weird, at uh, Starbucks, or a small cup of coffee at Caribou or Dunn Brothers. That's cheaper than one small cup a month. So, whatever. Uh, 20 bucks a year is nothing to listen to some premium stuff. So do get that if you so desire. Timberwolves Explosion will be joining that network as well at some point, one of these days. But uh, yeah, <laughs> that day will come one of these days. It's, maybe I'm kind of de facto in it, kind of, but more by more by word only at this stage. But if, if eventually, Hank McCoy slash Wayne Hunt, I'm never going to get that right, has uh, been busy as all get out. I'm busy too, but he's busier. That type of thing. So it is what it is. And, of course, you got the international uh, issue as well because of uh, the time. <laughs> the, the time. It's tough. So it is what it is. The time is a little different in Australia than it is here. I believe a 16-hour difference. So it is what it is, lad. One of these days I'll be a guest on that show again, too. I've been invited a couple of times, and sometimes I can do it, sometimes I can't, that type of thing. And I've had Vince Germano on this show many times. Hank McCoy, I believe, twice has been on this show. I keep calling him Hank McCoy, Wayne Hunt. So, there it is. Uh, even Stu Benson's welcome on the show if you'd like. Maybe maybe we'll have a trifecta or something like that. Um, all right. Enough. Thank you for listening. Take care. We'll be talking to you next week. Hopefully a more than successful week. That would be nice.